Another important human resource management function is training employees. Training employees include training new and current employees for adding knowledge and or new skills. Training employees includes also orientation for the newcomers. Employee orientation, which is called also onboarding, provides the new employees with the information they need in order to perform effectively their tasks and succeed in working inside the organization. The purpose of the orientation process is to get the newcomers socialized with their colleagues, to help the newcomers to know about the organization structure and regulations, and to help them know about the tasks and the duties required from them. The orientation process includes information like employees' benefits, personnel policies, daily routine, company organization and operation, safety measures, and facility tools. The training efforts help to achieve the organization's needs, the individual needs, and to improve the productivity. The organization may provide employees with different training categories like the required and regular training, for safety, for wages and hours rules, for employee orientations, for benefits. The second category may be for interpersonal and problem solving training, such as communication skills, writing skills, team relationships, coaching and problem analysis. The third category may be for job and technical training, and the fourth one for development and career. The training process is summarized in four main steps, A, D, I, E, A for training needs analysis, D for designing the program, I for implementation, and we will discuss here the training techniques, and E for evaluation, evaluation the training effectiveness. First, the organization should identify its training needs, that why and when the organization should offer training for its employees. Here, there is an important point that to differentiate between. Can't do problems, so the training should be delivered to help employees achieve the required tasks, and won't do problems, that the poor performance comes from other reasons rather than the skills shortage. Reasons may be demotivation or something else, like dissatisfaction about some HR policies. We have three main types of training need analysis. First, task analysis. This is done for new jobs and new employees. Second, strategy analysis, when the organization changes its strategic orientation. And current performance analysis for current employees. We will focus on these three main categories for training needs analysis. The purpose of the orientation process is to get the newcomers socialized with their colleagues, to help the newcomers to know about the organization structure and regulations, and to help them know about the tasks and the duties required from them. We have to, be, to select the best method to deliver the training program. We have on-the-job training program techniques and off-the-job training techniques and computerized training techniques. On-the-job training means having a person learn the tasks by actually doing it. It may include the coaching approach, job rotation, and special assignments. While off the job training techniques include lectures, case studies, role playing, and program learning. Program learning is a special training techniques 
which means a step-by-step self-learning method that consists of three main parts presenting facts and knowledge and problems to the learner allowing the person to respond with his own pace but providing deadlines and providing feedback about the accuracy of his answers computerized and web-based learning types like video conference is mostly used for training for geographically distributed employees and may include interactive ways of learning. The final step we will focus on in the training process is evaluating the training efforts. The most popular mo model is Kirkpatrick evaluation criteria which evaluates the reaction of trainees whether they like or dislike the program Second point is learning, test the trainees to determine whether they have learned the principles, skills and facts they already supposed to be learned. Third is the behavior, whether their behavior already changed when they go back for their shops and results. In the last part of our syllabus, we will talk about performance management. We have to differentiate between performance appraisal and performance management. Performance appraisal includes setting work standards, assessing actual performance, and comparing actual performance with the standards in order to provide the feedback to employees in order to motivate them, correct their performance, and motivate them to continue their performance. Performance management concept is an integrated approach or process to ensure that an employee's performance supports and contributes to the whole organization's strategic objectives. Each organization has to care about the performance appraisal because a performance appraisal is the basis for payments and promotion decisions it plays an integral part in the performance management process. It helps correct any deficiencies in the performance and is useful for career planning. Who should be responsible for the performance appraisal of employees? We have the most important party, which is immediate supervisor. Also, we have the peers and colleagues of the employee. The employee is still rating about himself and his performance. The subordinates in order to evaluate the performance of the employee as a leader. The HR in order to evaluate the compliance of the HR rules or with the HR rules. And we have 360 degrees feedback, which is the most effective way to take into account the whole parties that deal with the employee including customers, supervisors, followers, peers, and his view in order to appraise the employee's performance. The training process is summarized in four main steps, A, D, I, E, A for training needs analysis, D for designing the program, I for implementation, and we will discuss here the training techniques, and E for evaluation, evaluation the training effectiveness. The alternation ranking method is to rank your employees from best to worst on a specific trait, which is so difficult to use when the number of employees is large. But it is an easy way to distinguish between the worst and best employees. We can use another method for large number of employees, which is called forced distribution method. Here, there is a predetermined percentages. There are predetermined percentages of employees in order to place the employees in performance categories. In the critical instance method, a supervisor keeps a record of uncommonly good and uncommonly 
undesirable behaviors. It looks like a lot of positive and negative examples of subordinates work. The main advantage is that this record is to be kept during the year, during the whole year. While appraising the performance of employees, there are many problems the appraiser may, may fall in, like unclear standards, the halo effect that one dimension of the employee's performance affects the whole performance of the employee appraiser, another mistake which is central tendency when the appraiser sticks to the average score to all employees, leniency or strictness error, leniency when the supervisor or the appraiser sticks to high score and strictness when the supervisor strict to lower scores to all employees. And we have also recency effect when the appraiser is being affected by the recent behaviors of the employees and the final error is bias. To deal with the previous appraisal problem, as an appraiser you have to be aware with the problems, select the right method and use multiple methods, keep a diary like the critical instance method, get an agreement with the employee about the plan for future performance, be fair as much as you can. When we finalize the performance appraisal of an employee, we have to conduct with the employee an appraisal interview. The appraisal interviews have many types. First, satisfactory promotable, satisfactory not promotable, unsatisfactory correctable, and unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory uncorrectable. In satisfactory promotable, the performance is satis satisfactory and there is a chance for an employee to get promoted to the next level or to higher degree. In satisfactory performance but not promotable, there is no chance for promotion, so you have to search about another method in order to motivate the employees to conduct the same performance or to improve their performance, like compensation strategies. When the performance is unsatisfactory, we have two options. The performance can be corrected via training or searching for the main reason of poor performance and try to solve it. And the final situation that the performance is unsatisfactory, uncorrectable. And here the interview, the appraisal interview may be skipped. And this is the final point in ourselves. Good luck.